Hello everybody and welcome to the Cybersecurity Trends for 2024, where we're going to look at the trends for this year and see how you can protect your organization in the era of AI. As we saw this year, AI is going like crazy. It's going to help you in your business, but it's also going to ha help hackers in their business. So in here we're going to talk about kind of like the trends that we have seen and what we can expect in 2024. So as I mentioned, we cannot predict the future. We do not have a crystal ball where we know what's going to happen, but we do have a lot of security experts and we can see kind of like what are the hacks that happened this year, what had a big impact this year and what we can expect and how we expect the technology to evolve over the next year and the threads that you probably will see next year. So first, let's talk about the top cybersecurity breaches of 2023. So we had the Okta data breach where um, they attack customer support and get information from customer support showing how vulnerable those people are. Um, and the biggest part was that it was caused by a personal account, Gmail account. So it wasn't, they, they targeted his Gmail account that he had on, on the machine and then used that to break in. Meaning that like maybe they tried before with the identity, breaking identity, which is the easiest, but once you cannot do that because you're, you're organization is using official credentials or something like that, they'll try to move on to something else, which means compromising the device. They might compromise that if they have personal accounts. So locking down that device, having separate devices is very important. Uh, then we have the MGM ransomware attack. So ransomware, we have seen it for like the last five years. However, this one was different. This one was one of the first ones where they use social engineering to get in. It wasn't some unpatched vulnerability. It was actually social engineering of the resetting of the password, emulating to be some engineer getting access to their account and then from there spreading their ransomware. So we're seeing more attacks once again on, this was an internal IT desk with social engineering. Then 23andMe data breach, that one they did credential stuffing. So we can still see that uh, people are still using credentials uh, in the same places, uh, the same credentials in multiple places. Actually, there is a stat that is 45% of people reuse their credential even after they know it has been compromised. And one of the main things, and we'll see that in the last three breaches, is attackers are going more for data. So we have the UPS data breach where they actually use the data to fish the attack. So they knew that you have a package coming, they would try to send you an SMS for you to fall for it. And then the Born Ontario, they stole a bunch of health data from the Ontario government in Canada. So what we can see, so the TLDR of the last uh, screen is attackers are targeting credentials. That's something it has been for the past few years. Um, however, once they once you lock that down, which we are seeing a lot of companies doing and adopting official credentials and uh, using certificates, removing kind of passwords wherever they can, they start going for your devices. So for example, here at Kitos, we have separate devices. So you have your email device with your corporate identity that that literally gives you access to email and your corporate stuff. However, engineers have a completely different device and completely different identity that they only use to uh, access production and so on. So having that separation is something that will come down the line once you have secured your identity to prevent attackers from being to do that. Uh, so it's kind of good that we're seeing companies secure their identity, but kind of bad that we're already seeing people move on from compromising identities to compromising devices. While ransomware is still big, most attackers are now focusing on stealing data. So if you see the last three attacks that I talked about was actually about gathering that data and stealing it. Before it was, I'll encrypt your data and you'll have to pay me ransomware. Now they realize that it's actually way better business to steal that data and either use it for attacks or sell that data. So they're kind of focusing more on gathering that data. And the biggest thing is most attacks leverage social engineering because as we know, the human is the weakest point of your security structure. Uh, so we have to kind of like attack that. So up until now, I have not talked about AI at all. So I promised AI. So where does AI fit in? So first of all, AI is getting way better. Um, so far, everything you have seen in this presentation, like the images and everything has been created by AI. Uh, there's no human design behind this. It was just ChatGPT with DALI 3 just creating the images. So as you can see, it's getting really good, but it's not just the image creation or like the story creation you could have full conversations with ai that it's sometimes even better than, than humans it could actually also help you create code so if you're just getting into it and like you can ask ai how to create code which is 
lowering the bar for attackers to, to start attacking. And the last one is voice cloning. So uh, for like more complex attacks, you could actually use AI to completely clone the voice of someone and fool them. So this is kind of like the current state of like low level attacks. This is something that like a lot of my, everybody probably has gotten one. Uh, this is one that one of my employees got about someone pretending to be me um, for trying to get them to buy cards. So like this is more for gift cards. It's not a super complex attack. But as you can see, it's very bad currently. Like, you know, it just doesn't sound like me. Doesn't sound like someone that speaks English at the first language. So it's kind of easy to tell. However, with AI, this can go better and it can go more personalized. And we'll show that in a second. So basically attackers, they can use AI for two ways of attacking people. So one is they go the spear phishing route. So that's where they completely mimic your voice. Um, you know, do a specific attack on you and try to get you, which they'll have more tools, better stuff that before you didn't know. Even there's videos now that, that you can kind of like fake being that person, deep fakes and all that stuff. So that's getting very good and scary. And the other side is improving spam. So as we saw in the last slide, spam right now, it's not great. It's kind of like catch them all. However, it can really be automated with, for example, a chat GPT, and it can take a few minutes to do that. So next I'm going to do that. So in here, I just grab chat GPT. I assumed that, you know, like I, I came in as an attacker because this can be automated with API calls. So like, you know, you just grab a random company. Can you search Kitos employees with high ranking uh, positions and tell me about the sports they played? So I tried to do it just hobbies, but it, it didn't work. So I had to do sports, but you know, you could have one that does sports, one that does music and so on. And this can be all automated. And then you can see here, it came out uh, with me. And then I was like, what, what sports did he play? And it said, well, he was a cyclist. He raced here, here and here. He was part of this club. Um, and then I was like, okay, utilize that information. Can you create a personal email to invite him to a charity event in his hometown? So as you can saw completely, this is can be completely automated there's no personalization on my side and all of a sudden i have a really good email with kind of information about me saying like hey y'all i saw that you raced here here and here you're the ceo of Kitos. i want to invite you to this so it has a very high degree of personalization which there's a bigger chance that i'll donate to that charity and fall for their trap so that's how good it can get and it can be done at scale so are, are we just screwed? Did hackers win? Uh, what can we do about it? And this is where you have to remove the human from your security strategy. Yeah, there is very important education you have to do. And obviously you still have to educate them. Like, hey, if you get a phone call from me, even if it sounds like me and it's coming from my number, maybe verify in another way, like call me in another channel. If I called you by phone, call me by Teams um, and do all, all those things. Uh, but also there's technical stuff you can do. So as I mentioned at Kitos, we have different devices. So maybe have devices with VMs and manage them with a device manager with Intune and something to make sure that they cannot use their personal email. Make sure you have detections, malware detections, um, and so on. The second one is use official credentials. So it's way harder to give someone your password if you don't have a password. So it really removes a human from that side of things. Um, and the last one, as, as we saw in many of the attacks, IT desks are the ones being targeted. Why? They're trying to help people. Like they don't want to keep an engineer blocked. They don't want to keep your employees blocked. So they go out of their way to unblock them, which makes them vulnerable. And same with customers, it's like customer facing agents. They might download something from a customer and run it um, just to help them and get them unblocked. So in there, that's where, for example, ephemeral VMs come in. Uh, and for password resets, let's remove them. Let's have AI validate. So for example, with us, we use the face in easy CMS. We use the face ID. They have to scan their face. They have to scan their uh, government ID. We match that with what you have in your records. So removing that human not only saves you money by having those humans work on something that is more important than password resets and so on, but it also makes it more secure because it's ironically AI is better at catching AI than humans are. So having AI try to do that stuff is a better way. So 
that's it. That's how you can protect your organization in the future of AI. Uh, please let us know if you have any uh, questions. Uh, I'll hang around here for any questions. I'm finishing the, the YouTube side. If, if you're watching this on YouTube, please comment um, down below and we'll be happy to answer your questions.